After 18 grueling months, it's a dogfight to the finish for President of the United States. Yeah, here's another look at where our polls stand in North Carolina. We have live coverage from New York CBS's Weijia Zhang has the latest. CBS News projects that Donald Trump, the Republican nominee, has won the state of Florida and is likely to win the state. I mean, I'm so sorry. He's won the state of Ohio and he's likely to win the state of Florida tonight. Both are keys to winning the presidency. Ivanka Trump tweeted a photo of her father watching election returns with family members at Trump Tower. The Republican nominee is outperforming pre-election polls, picking up a number of states, including Texas and its 38 delegates. We want to win. We do want to win. Trump cast his own ballot this morning. Exit polls show four in ten voters said they want a candidate who can bring needed change. And the vast majority of those voters said Trump is the guy to do it. I've changed from Democrat to Republican because I I like who's running for Republican. The billionaire businessman energized his base as a political outsider. An exit poll show he did well with white voters, people over 45, and conservative Christians. This room is relatively small, but the crowd keeps going wild as races are called. I'm Jamie Yukis at Trump headquarters. And I'm Weijia Jang at Clinton headquarters, where the room went wild when she won Virginia. But there are still several battleground states that have not been called. The crowd here is anxiously waiting for the results to come in. CBS News projects Hillary Clinton picked up several reliably blue states, including her birth state, Illinois, and her current home state of New York, where she voted this morning. Well, I know how much responsibility goes with this, and uh, so many people are counting on the outcome of this election. Exit polls show Clinton is leading among women, blacks, Latinos, and millennials. 24-year-old Andre Bozak cast his vote to elect the first female president. People have seen what the what's at stake, and they know that the other guy, if he becomes president, things are not going to look good for us. Clinton has won the state of Colorado. Good news for her campaign. At Clinton headquarters, Weijia Jang, back to you. All right, Weijia, thank you so much. Of course, we will continue to track the presidential race as those vote, votes from out west continue to come in. We'll bring you the latest throughout the show. Moving closer to home, the gubernatorial race is another one which gained time in the spotlight nationwide. It's still a neck and neck race between incumbent Governor Pat McCrory and challenger Roy Cooper. Issues like the state crime lab, HB2, and the state's economy have been hot topics. We have team coverage at each campaign's election watch party. WNCT's Kelly Byrne is at Raleigh's Marriott City Center with the Democrats. But first, we start with WNCT's Zora Stevenson live from the GOP watch party. Zora. <laughs> Yeah, the room continues to erupt as more and more projections come in. First, it was the Senate, then saying that Donald Trump won here in North Carolina. So this may be Governor Pat McCrory's election watch party, but it's really the Republicans of North Carolina's election watch party. Right now, the chairman of the NCGOP is on stage kind of rallying the troops here, getting everybody excited. Governor Pat McCrory isn't expected to arrive here until the results are full, until the results are final. In the meantime, a number of his supporters are are here waiting anxiously. There are a lot of elected officials in the room, including the Wake County Sheriff. Kinston Mayor B.J. Murphy has been here all day. There are also regular people who just wanted to witness this historic election. We've talked about how important the millennial vote is, and a lot of them are here tonight. We caught up with a couple who say the atmosphere is a positive one. The alternative for me tonight was to be stuck in my dorm doing homework, and I figured it's the one night out of any in the school year where you know, the world changes tonight. You know, like it or not, the world changes tonight. Might as well celebrate. I was hoping it was going to be like this. I like being around people who are kind of leading the same way I am, hoping for the things, same things that I am. And it's just, it's really nice to be in that kind of atmosphere. The governor's race is still too close to call. More than 95% of the votes are in, and Governor McCrory has a slight lead over Roy Cooper, but again, still too close to call. A couple minutes ago, they were yelling Trump, 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 so a lot of energy here in this room at Governor McCrory's watch party. Live in Raleigh, Zora Stevenson, not on your side. And I think we're going to go over to Kelly Byrne, who's just across the way at the Democratic watch party. Kelly? Moments ago, we just heard from Deborah Ross, who is projected to lose against U.S. Senator Richard Burr, who is the incumbent and has hold, held the seat since 2005. It's like we're getting 
some more information in right now. Donald Trump looks like he is expected to be the projected winner. Of course, those numbers are still coming in. And Deborah Ross told the crowd that while she's disappointed, she wouldn't, does not regret anything. Now, as we continue to get more updates in, continue to give you more information. The gubernatorial race still too close to call, differing less than a percentage point last check. And when that news broke, many of the cheers were turning into size, as when we heard about Deborah Ross as well. Now, several people with the Cooper campaign have spoke to the crowd and are continuing to give updates as those numbers come in. We built for the Democratic coordinated campaign. We built a, a huge infrastructure. We've been working, talking to voters, registering new voters, working the last few weeks to get them out to vote, uh, knocking on doors, making phone calls, and it's really been a, an all-out effort to uh, to elect Democrats up and down the ballot. Attorney General Roy Cooper is expected to arrive shortly, and many I spoke to say they're excited, but they're also very nervous. Of course, we'll continue to bring you updates as more of the and more information comes in, and as those final precincts get get voted and get counted. Live in Raleigh, Kelly Byrne, not on your side. All right, Kelly, thank you. We want to update folks now on the president's race. CBS News is projecting Donald J. Trump will win North Carolina's 15 electoral votes. This state went to the Republicans back in 2012 with Mitt Romney, but Donald Trump, the projected winner here in North Carolina. And our state is historically a predominantly blue state. Under the most recent party structure, the first governor was Republican. That was William Holden in 1868. Since then, seven Republicans and 18 Democrats have served as governor. Another big race we're tracking is for one of our two U.S. Senate seats in North Carolina. Incumbent Richard Byrd defeating Deborah Ross. WNCT's Katie Harden joins us now to give us some more insight into what was a very heated election. Yeah, well, Ken, millions of dollars was pumped into this rate, not only by the opponents, but also by special interest groups. Ultimately, Republican incumbent Richard Byrd will keep his seat in the Senate. The Associated Press has declared the race based on Burr's current 52 percent of the vote to 45 percent for Deborah Ross. This, of course, a hotly contested race with at least $58 million spent by those special interest groups alone on mostly attack ads. North Carolina was a key state for Democrats to pick up in the Senate. Burr announced earlier this year that this would be his last term serving in the Senate. He took to Twitter earlier this evening thanking voters for his reelection. Katie Harden, nine on your side. Thanks. Moving to House seat District 6 covering Dare, Hyde, Washington and Beaufort counties. Democratic candidate Warren Judge passed away over the weekend. The Democratic District 6 Executive Committee voted yesterday to have his wife Tess as the replacement. She faced Beverly Boswell, who won this seat at 51%. Tracking other state races with Roy Cooper running for governor, the attorney general's seat is up for grabs. Republican Buck Newton has 50 percent of the vote and Democrat Josh Stein has 49 percent. That's with 94 percent of precincts reporting. In the lieutenant governor's race, incumbent Dan Forrest is looking to keep his title for another term. He is running against Linda Coleman and Jackie Cole. In Beaufort County, in the commissioner's race, three of the four incumbents are back for another term. Newcomer Jerry Evans knocked off Robert Belcher. WNCT's Josh Birch has more from Beaufort County. It was a race a lot of people were paying attention to here in Beaufort County in the past. Some commissioners have made it very well known how they feel about others on the board. One of the more outspoken, Hood Richardson, who received the most votes in the election. He says he hopes the results send a message. Public is tired of politics as usual. They're tired of the tricks that politicians pull. They're looking for someone that will at least try to be honest with them and that will not try to cover things up. The next highest vote getter, Democrat Jerry Langley. After getting the results, Langley explained what's first on his to-do list. Well, one of the things is uh, we're trying to implement the countywide EMS, and I'm hoping that uh, we can go forward with that and work out what kinks we have in the system. Newcomer Jerry Evans and incumbent Gary Brin round out the list of newly elected commissioners. Republicans will remain in control of the board. In Washington, Josh Birch, 9 in your side.